This is the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin, a.k.a. Q Cause No Days Off. From on the field and off the field, NFL player and entrepreneur. Motivating you to be the best you can be and getting you out of your comfort zone. Sharing with you travel, sports, and entrepreneurial tips with amazing guests on the show. Now, get ready for your life to change with the Life Journey Podcast and your host, Quentin Gauze. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Journey Podcast. Man, it's been a, it's been a while um, since we had a, a music, uh, you know, someone from the music industry on and we got black rose supreme on from the islands man like black rose what's going on brother just there bro just um just chilling in the heat <laughs> also chilling in the quarantine and lockdown and all that stuff but all in all chilling in the, chilling in the heat bro. i got you I, I mean yeah it's definitely warmer where where you're at than here for sure <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I was telling, I was telling, um, you know, Black Rose, um, I was saying like his camera, his, his webcam is crisp. He got the 4k. I'm like, hold on. I got to get my camera hooked up. My, uh, my Sony. I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta get my hooked up. He got the Sony hooked up thing. Chris, when we got on, I was like, hold up. <laughs> how to make, how to make sure it looks good. Yeah, well, don't worry. Again, when we finish here, I'm going to hook you up and show you exactly what you need to get something looking like this. So you'll it, it, be, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. So, hey, let's dive into it. Uh, so on this, on this podcast, we normally just talk about your entire life journey, how you got to where you are today. And I def- you just want to dive in. I wanna, I'm curious to know, like, when you were growing up in the islands, because my mother's from Panama, she's from Central America, has some family in Jamaica. So, like, I know island life is a little bit different than the U.S. for sure. So, like, what explain, like, growing up, what it was like, and um, uh, to, uh, up to your point to, like, high school. How, how was that experience? Um, well, I, I can tell you flat off the bat, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how high school is to here, because um, we don't necessarily have high school. So we have, um, we have kindergarten, um, we have reception. Well, yeah, we have kindergarten, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, primary is kind of, primary is split into like a little school, a like school. So in primary, we have, some primary schools have like a kindergarten. Um, different exactly line them up together. Um, so you know, one thing I can say in terms of um, school life, it definitely was <laughs> fun. I I would say. Um, I, I, you know, I, I would always tell people that one of the biggest scams who were who were told is to grow up because now that I'm an adult, I kind of wish that <laughs> I didn't grow up so fast, but it really wasn't a choice. You know, it happens. Um, you know, pretty much living that free life, going to school, learning, meeting people, um, stuff like that. Um, when I was in primary school, I was into Cub Scouts. Um, I was into ball and dance, in which I hated, and I kind of think I should have sticked to that because. I think that would have played a, a, a big role in my career and stuff like that. Um, moved on to secondary school. Didn't pass with the school that I wanted to pass for, even though I had the grades to go there. Um, our, our, our system in terms of the, the um, I guess the, how would you put it, the achievements or whatever, it, it, is a little different. Um, but let's just say the school I wanted to go for, I didn't pass with that school, I was very upset. Went to the school I went to, Pretty good there. Um, music kind of started for me from first form. So this would have been when I was 11 years old. This is 2001. Um, you know, when I think school started with chanting and stuff like that, we would be in the stairwells, um, singing our favorite songs from hip hop to dance hall, um, stuff like that. It was only really when I got into third form that the DJ side of things came up. Uh, that kind of came into play. So, like, um, you know, when I would get the school bus and get off in town, we used to go into a mall that had a, um, a, a DJ. Well, not really a DJ spot, but a music spot. Do you know how music spots be? They got all the equipment from DJ stuff, guitar stuff, drum stuff, and I would just go in and play and try to learn the equipment and stuff like that. Um, you know, as time went on, it got better and better. 
Um, and then also met up with this guy, I think, in the later part of third form. He was probably in either fourth or fifth. He was above me, so we ended up being friends and stuff like that. We used to get a right home with him and stuff like that. And um, you know, he had some DJ equipment. So then that's where the love kind of came a little more because I kind of had access to these things. Okay. And try to practice and stuff like that. And just know that I was horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Couldn't get a song mixed. Nothing. <laughs> um, it, it was like, like really, truly, it was horrible. Comparing um, then to now, it was horrible. But, you know, we all got to learn. Um, yeah, apart from, from the music and stuff like that, I was into sports. Right. Um, and I, I always tell people, like, I always kind of wonder how life would be if I had follow through with certain things and, you know, certain things that went in favor. Um, so, for instance, now, I was good at the sports I played were cricket, basketball. Um, wasn't really allowed to play football because in primary school I got into a very serious car accident. Um, I got my foot, my right foot was broken, so I wasn't permitted to play any sports at all, any any um, contact sports that is foot contact sports and football, um, which y'all call soccer. Um, that comes under that, so I wasn't really able to play that, but. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm young, free spirit, hard ears, stubborn. I still play some football every now and then, but I would, you know, kind of watch it, uh, stuff like that. So it was cricket, football, basketball, table tennis, and judo. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then it was also a long distance. I was also a long distance athlete and a relay athlete, um, which, was, which, which was kind of like an odd pair. Because usually, if you have a, a like, like a like relay is sprinting, yeah, so obviously hundred meter, two hundred meter, four hundred meter stuff like that. But then long distance is by itself. You don't usually have someone who does long distance doing relay, but I kind of fit there. <laughs> Coach said I fit pretty good. He was like, you know, I, I start and end pretty well. So you know, um, and I remember doing my SATs. You know, SATs is, is kind of how you'd be able to get scholarships to travel and go to colleges overseas and stuff like that. And I pretty much failed that with like one mark. Yeah, that was that. I'm be upset, got a trade, then didn't pass. Um, let me see what else. I, I don't think I'd ask him to do that over. But, you know, did these slow? step box it was just like a step forward for music so right pushing me music a little more a little more before I met with guy who was doing stuff like every weekend with we'll go him um stuff like that finished school in 2005 2006 um i went to a, a, a school for trading um mm-hmm. to learn a trade not trading but to learn a trade. all this time i was still into music so if you're looking at me being 16, 17, um, you know, still into music, still learning stuff, burning CDs, trying to figure out how to get this dude, that dude, the next one, third, all that stuff. Um, and when I moved, things kind of blew a little bigger when I moved with my grandma and from. So I, I was living with my mother um, in the suburbs, uh, which is just outside of town. Right. Um, and I got the option when I was 16 to move with my grandmother lived in Thomas, you know, the urban area. I think it's kind of kicked off from there. So I'm 16, 17, and I'm playing in parties that have been people who are 30 to, to 60, which, which we call the dub, the quote unquote illegal parties, um, you know, the parties that have a lot of guns and uh, drugs and stuff like that. But it's, it's still a safe space. I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, it, it got the bad boys and stuff like that, but it's still a safe space. Um, and then obviously too because of who my who my dad is and my grandparents and stuff like that. Like right. Was, yeah, that respect. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that respect and protection. So, 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 so like, even so, what that going into that experience had to be just like it's like you're getting ready for a big game and you're like, yo, I like I'm 16, I'm coming, I'm about to perform, you know, in front of 30 year olds and all these other people. Mm-hmm. I know your heart had to be pounding. 
or were you just like you went in just normal like oh this is just uh, another day i was a little i was a little scared to be honest i was a little scared so like we're looking at someone who's between 16 and 18 um you know fresh to the scene and stuff like that there's a lot of things i, I didn't know so um like my first couple of times being in the the, the, the part, those parties and stuff like that it was more so like a watching experience so right I would, I would roll with some guys and see how they're playing and stuff like that and then i finally got my chance to you know, start the party, um, which was it, was, it was a vibe. I mean, starting is like everyone goes through it in their career. You got to start a party and you got to you gotta pay your dues. You got to build a ranking and come up. You just can't come in, come on to the scene and get a prime time slot. You know, you got to be able to start play when nobody is there, play for just the bartenders and those who sweeping up and security, you know. Um, and I did that till probably about maybe 19 or so um, and I had to go away from that because one the money wasn't good right um, two the environment wasn't really becoming a safe environment um, like every couple of nights you would have the police coming and raiding it mm. you know and, and that it, it just began to be a, a space that I didn't want to be in anymore right then apart from that like if, if, if you know about the dub culture, dub culture is run by reggae. Um, so just to, you know, go on and that a little further, Americans call reggae something totally different to what we call reggae. Um, so reggae is actually conscious music, so like the Sizzler, Bob Marley, stuff like that, that's reggae, reggae. And then there's that, so you have Cartel, Nevada, stuff like that. So right. in the dub, Reggae runs the dance hall. Like some of the best dubs that I've played for, or some of the best dubs that I've been to, played nothing but reggae. I mean, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. When you okay. think, when you think it's gonna be a turn up session, <laughs> nah, it's all conscious vibe for the entire night. And you know, you're just smoking your weed, um, you know, you're drinking your NC or whatever drinks they they have in the club. Mm -hmm. You know, getting and stuff like that, and you're having a good time. So, again, some of the best dubs I did for and went to were run by by reggae. Um, and, you know, I I I enjoyed it while it lasted, but you know, being I want to be different, I want to be able to play more music, different music. Um, so like. There was a Chingy album, um, the, the album that has on holiday in, I think. I think it was that album. Um, like, I used to kill that album on my Sony Walkman. Like, kill it till it started sticking from, from the very beginning. Like, that was yeah. the only CD that it had in that Walkman at the time. And this would have been just, this would have been when the Walkman became a, a big thing in Barbados. Because there, there, there was one of the tapes, but then, you know, CDs came into play this month, stuff like that, yada, yada, yada. And I used to kill that. So, like, I was giving a hip hop, and then when it got into the DJing, it kind of gravitated more towards that talk. Um, that's all for reggae, that is. So, you know, coming up in the dub, just playing reggae, that's all playing and dandy, but I wanted to get away from that. I wanted to play more music, I wanted to be able to play some R&B, some hip hop, some soul play, you know? So, I, I had to leave the dub, I had to jump shit. And you know, look for something else, and that's when I kind of found the club scene, which was a whole different battle, <laughs> a whole different set of challenges mm. uh, for itself. Because we got this ghetto boy who everyone knows used to play in the dub, and the dub is played bear reggae and bear bashment. And we're going over to the bougie side. Who's this ghetto boy? What does he have to offer? All this thing, right. And it was, it was like, I had to kind of like prove myself um, from the very beginning of after, you know, after proving myself for like two, three, four years on the dub scene, I got to do this all over again. And, and yeah, um, this would have been around 2010. I switched from the name I had before because I realized that that name wasn't, that name wasn't the right name to really go over into the other. Um, the other world, quote unquote. Um, 
So yeah, I had to do a name change. Um, yeah, change your name, and that's a whole other story. Another story. Well, I mean, it seems like you had a full journey. Like it, it reminds me of just like with with sports, like like with football. Like we have to, you start from like Pop Warner as a kid. You got to go through the stages and prove yourself. High school, middle school, high school, prove yourself. Then high school is like where you like okay, I want to get a full scholarship to go to school, and to do that, you have to like have good film, good tape for coaches to watch, right? So like with you is like you had to like go on the scene for like, like you saying like, Hey, I was on the scene for two years here doing this four years. And like, you took time and you put the effort in. Did it, did it get discouraging? Like when you didn't see results right away? Cause people, you know how today's society is like, man, like I want to see, I want to uh, get instant gratification right now without putting work in. Like, was it frustrating at times? Did you see like, you know, you, did you get like little nuggets here and there? Like, okay, I'm seeing progress. I'm getting these opportunities. I'm gonna keep going. Like, what motivated you to stay on the track? Um, well, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. I, I was discouraged so many different times. And trying to lie, boy, there were probably three things that tears actually came to my eyes when I was like, "Yo, like, I, like, I don't understand why it's not working out." I, you know, I got this. Um, I would never go into an interview and tell anybody that it was a better world or it was easier or whatever. Like, for some people, it looks like if it was easy, but it, it definitely wasn't like, I had so many times where I was discouraged, so many times where I told myself, you know what, mm. I'm done with this. I'm thrown in the towel. I can find something else to do. But because of the, because of my love for music, it, it just kept me there. Um, right. So it was, there were times where I wasn't making any money from DJing or anything like that. You know, because it's in my grandmother was paying bills and stuff like that, and it was like, yo, you know, find a job, yada, 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 and stuff like that. And, and, you know, even though I found the job, I still wasn't, I still wasn't happy. Like, you know, music is, is always making me happy. Even though I wasn't making any money or whatever, like, that is what was making me happy. Um, and, you know, a lot of discouraging times come, but as I tell people, a lot of good times came as well. So let's say if I had, four discouraging times that one time that something did happen like that was enough to keep yeah, just continue one day like that was enough even if it was something as 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 small as as, as whatever like that was just enough for me to tell myself oh well, yeah things looking a little better let me keep pushing Right. So again, I would never tell them about that. It was, I, in my way, it was real tough. Um, so what else? I think there was a time where um, I, I I got called to play somewhere, and I was there waiting, 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 like four, five, six DJs done play. I'm waiting, waiting. I'm still not getting play. Night's done, and I ain't get play. And I hope, um, you know, in, in those times, it wasn't a case of. It wasn't a case of you guarantee to pay when you're there. It was you want to get paid when you play. So I'm there the entire night. You know, you probably owe some money on an outfit or whatever, or a taxi fare or whatever. Like, that's money I've gone to waste because I ain't get to play. You right. Know, I ain't get to get by anything. And with a lot of those happening, you know, it, it, I was discouraged. But again, it's like the love of music, it, it just kept me there at bay. And yeah. I think in 2010 or 2011 is when I had my last job. Because um, I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm very stubborn. Like, like I'm very, very, I could be very stubborn when I'm ready. And I was working at this, this place and I, I asked if I could, you know, get an extra hour for lunch just so I could go and do anything and come back. And mind you, I told them about the event in advance and they told me no. And I was like, okay, well, I quit. Walk off the job. And yeah, I ran to the gig and, and that was that. Um, there was also another time where I, where I, <laughs> there was also another time where I quit my job as well. I used to work at KFC. It was a long, long time ago. Um, 
this would have been the I run the dub I run the dub time but a little after in a sense. Um, so something got messed up with calendar at work the roster. Now, I knew I was supposed to be off this particular day. Um, so I saw the I, I saw the this is before WhatsApp, EBM, this is before we had camera phones to actually take proper pictures and stuff like that. So I you know I memorized it and I because really truly you just gotta remember the first day you got working next week. Yeah. So I know for sure that I was to work the evening on this day. I got to work evening time. Everybody faced push up. And I was confused. So then I get called in the office, but it was late, things and I was like, What do you mean it was late? Like I'm here thirty minutes before my shift, what are you talking about? It's like, Oh no, you six hours late, da 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 and I was like Huh? It doesn't make any sense. But I know for sure, and God will God come in and tell me not. I know for sure they changed our roster to mess me up because I had a lot of issues with the company, um, you know, in, in terms of like, how things were being done and stuff like that. Like, right. Like, it was kind of bothering me. So I spoke out. It's not like if I went public, I, mean, I, I spoke out. I was like, yo, like, I don't really respect how we doing this or doing that because it don't really make sense, you know? So I feel like, you know, they I don't wanna I don't wanna make it seem like if they plot against me or whatever, you know, that would be very big. Um, but I just have the feeling that somebody changed our roster, whoever was responsible for the roster, changed the roster because they knew exactly what it's up. Um, but you know, uh, we kinda having this conversation or whatever and I was like, you know what? I'm not even arguing. This was like the Thursday. I walked off the job. Friday I was in a DJ competition, I won that competition. Um, yeah, like that was like another moment that told me yeah, the, another another great moment that yeah, uh, another, opened uh, opened up more yeah. doors. Yeah, another another great moment there. Um, you know, I, I just kind of I saw from there. Uh, basically, even looking back at that that same situation with that job, we got with both of them, but more so the one before um, with the competition, like. And my mind is be like, if I had stayed, or, or let me say, if that didn't happen, what would have happened? I'd be asking myself, what would have happened? But <laughs> then it'd be like, kind of, be like, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll never know. All these things happen for a reason and kind of, you know, put a little gas in the tank and you believe, yeah, like, you got this, this is for you, keep pressing forward and then give up. Yeah. So, that, you yeah. see, so you went through a lot of, I mean, again, like the up and down journey, like just hearing that, cause I've been through that. So like, it just makes it. Say it again. It's been a lot. Been a lot, a lot of ups and downs. A lot of ups and downs, and like that's, and I think that like when you go through those ups and downs and those valleys and those peaks, it really makes you such a stronger person. Mm -hmm. And again, everybody sees the glory, you know, the the good, the good, all the good that's going on, and they don't see like what you what do you build up to, and that's that's the hard right. thing. And they, they only see they only see me wearing all white and walking down with all the lights and the red right. carpet and all that stuff. But they don't see when you know <laughs> when you have all the cut up pants and the cut up shirt running through the mud, you know, dragging along and stuff. Like they, they don't see that part. They don't see me putting the blood, sweat, and tears. They don't see when you're up for forty eight or seventy two hours working on projects and like they don't see that. They only see. They only see the, the, the end result. So, yeah. Hey man, it's like uh, wasn't with him shooting in the gym, you know? Like, <laughs> 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 I mean, a lot of people don't don't see that, but that's awesome that you've made it to the point you're at now. Like now, where I guess where are you looking to right now? You you see, you know, um, talking to your manager and stuff. Like you seem like you're in a point in your career where like you're looking to go take an international now. You're taking, looking yeah. to go around the world with this and COVID is starting, you know, people are able to travel now and stuff more. So like it's things are opening up. So where are you looking to go? Where are you looking to do? What's that outlook look like 
for you? Um, I, I, to, to be honest, the goal is you know to become a household name um, mm. in different regions. Um, you know, I started in 2015. Believe it or not, the first time I ever left Barbados was in 2014, and I left by ship. Um, did a cruise with my granddad. I mean, rest in peace. Um, did a cruise, a, a cruise with him throughout different Caribbean islands and. From you know going to these islands and seeing the culture and stuff like that, it kind of it, it kind of made me want to travel more. Right. Um, then we ended up leaving by plane later on that year. So we did we did our cruise ship twice. Then we did a plane later that year. Um, we had some kids. And you know did some linking up, did some DJs, went to the stations, went to the parties and. You know, that kind of encouraged me to want to travel because it's like, I started to realize, like, you know, I'm good. People mm-hmm. are like, you know, what I do outside of Barbados. Um, and then also from the checking the SoundCloud analytics and from Instagram and stuff like that, realizing that a lot of people were taking in content from outside either the same amount of visions um, or a little more. So that's when the marketing and stuff like that kind of changed and I started to push outside and as I started to travel more and go to different places, I started to realize that yes, the name is out there, but I need to see the face. Um, and you know, I kind of just try to push harder and harder wherever I go. So um, in terms of the places I've been and the places I want to go, um, I've been to I did Trinidad, St. Lucia, I did Antigua a couple of times. Done Miami a few times. I did New York twice. Uh, I did Boston once, um, and I'm pretty much looking to do all these places again, along with other places. So in terms of Caribbean, I was looking at Trinidad, um, maybe going over to the Dutch side. I actually got a, I got an opportunity to play in Martinique and Guadeloupe. Uh, I think that was in 2019, but it didn't work out because. It was around the same time in exams for school, so I wasn't able to leave. So I had to give the job to somebody else, basically. Mm. Um, I kind of hurt my heart, but you know, school is more important. Um, so definitely, I want to touch Martinique and Guadalupe uh, to be and stuff like that. Um, different parts of America, uh, I, I'm seeing that Atlanta has a. Yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta's a. Uh... Definitely a good music scene for sure. So like, there's a lot of people down here, a lot of people to, to uh, connect with for sure. So that you know, Atlanta. Like, I mean, you seem like you've just even getting exposed to that to even like fly to these different you know uh, countries, states to play. I mean, it's just creating more opportunity. And then like your content, you know, go make sure y'all check out his page too, man. Like he he does a lot of content creation and stuff as well, and does a good job with that. So like, just make sure y'all you know check him out. Um, he, you know, I really feel like, especially like talking to his manager, Shay, like just his talent along with this, like, yeah, your talent along with just like what you're trying to, like your mindset, where you're trying to go is like, like most people are like, oh, well, I just want to become a household name here or, the, you know, no, no, you're like, no, I want to take this international. <laughs> I want to take this around the world and we, we you know, we're going to do this right. And I, and I believe that from like checking out your content and everything, man, listening to music. So that's, no, nah, man, I really uh, no. This all kudos to you for this to hard the hard work that you're putting in to to go achieve where you want to be. Yeah, I mean, also to looking at um, looking at the, the Netherlands, Europe, Africa, because mm-hmm. you know Africa is home. Cool, so yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I could get to go back home and play, you know, um, like there is there is no there, there there's no limit. And in terms of like you know being a also name at home, I think I have that job done to to a certain extent. Right. Um, you know, I, I just recently passed 10 years as Black Rose. I didn't even realize that it was 10 years already. This time kind of went on a little harder or whatever. Um, and, you know, I realized that the name is known um, for Barbados. You know, I've been on radio every day. Um, all weekdays, Monday to Thursday. Sometimes on Friday, sometimes on Saturday. But for the most part, I was on radio every day. Um, different podcasts and stuff like that. So it's like, I feel like I have everything covered in Barbados so far. And there's only so much you could do where you're from. You gotta be able to, you know, expand and look at the bigger picture 
and I'm that guy who looks at the bigger picture, even though somebody may think, well, he's crazy. He, he nah. I, I look at the bigger picture. Um, so for me and, and Barbados, it, it kind of feels like, you know, shark in the pond kind of situation. Right. Um, you know, it, 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 it feels like that. Um, for the main part, I've done so much. And it's like, it's nothing else to do. So in order for me to grow more as Black Rose, I'm mean, going to need new, new of everything, new problems, new tribulations, new challenges, like everything that is positive and negative, you're going to need more of those or new of those in order to, to get forward. So let's say, for instance, if I was to move to Miami or Atlanta, like yeah. that'll be a problem for itself because I'm new to there. I gotta learn the culture. I gotta do all this thing. So that's gonna be a challenge. And with that challenge, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow. You know, I'm, I'm gonna grow. So um, definitely looking at, at expanding more. Um, as I said, from you know checking the analysis, the, the analytics and stuff like that. You know, I'm seeing that people are taking in the content from different parts all these different parts and looking to do some marketing and you know eventually be able to go and DJ there when Miss Rona decided to you know yeah. to retire because she don't seem that she wanna retire anymore. Yeah Rona Rona's been around too much yeah but Hopefully, yeah, that, that calms down so more art you know like artists like you and be everyone's just able to like get out and just be at events again, you know, so they yeah. can view and you see you because that's you know, online does work, but you know, when people see you in person, it's just like that intimate moment where they like, oh man, that, you know, Black Rose Supreme, like I've seen them in person, you know. It's just, they, they, they got to see everything. I mean, cause I do, I do Twitch. I've been doing Instagram got and, you. and Twitch and stuff like that. Um, Twitch has definitely kind of built the following a little more in terms of Canada. Um, cause a lot of people have been watching from there, mm -hmm. some in Boston, some in Atlanta. Um, so I've been trying to build on that, but then, it's like that's only one aspect of it but right. it's something to do until outside reopens again so right. you know you build up on this and then when you're able to go to their to their city or their country or whatever mm -hmm. like that's what's going to make the big impact of this like yo so not just from you speak in person or see you play in person, but like how you dress and, and stuff like that, they get to see and experience everything that is you. Um, right. So, so yeah. Yeah, man. Well, how can, um you know, folks that are, you know, you got, I know you may have like some younger kids that probably like aren't very, very inspired by you and they're watching you and stuff like that or just people that are looking to just hop into the music industry. If it's singing, if it's DJing, if it's whatever, what would you what's some advice you would give them if they want to get started um to hop into the music industry and start doing doing that um i would say that research is a very big part of anything you want to do but like you got to do the research um you just can't really dive into it you got to do some some kind of research i didn't do any research because obviously that wasn't really a time for research it just happened with love and for some people it would happen the same way um but i would say do the research and if it's something you really want to do, I mean, do it. Um, like we in a time, like, like that, that, that would be fair. We are in a time of a lot of uncertainty. Right. We don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's gonna happen. So just go for it. It's that mm -hmm. simple. I feel like I feel like now is that time that people start to realize, just go for it. Like, if you want to get into whatever, just go for it. Cause, like, the time is so uncertain. Like, don't put it off, just do it, you know? Um, Some gonna try to be perfect, like myself, but, you know, just do your research if you can do it. Um, look into what you wanna do, and simply, simply do it. Push for it, go for it, you can ask some questions. You know, always feel free to reach out to someone who's been in it longer than you and ask a question. Um, you know, if, 
if it so happens that you're not able to reach out to one, reach out to somebody else. Um, and ask a lot of questions because that's how you learn stuff. And simply, simply go for it. So, you know, and, I, and I feel too late. I feel too like in this day and age, it's easier to get into stuff because you've got the internet there. So right. you don't necessarily have to ask them on anything. You're just going to look for it online. In terms of being a DJ, like the most you need is a laptop. You can go and find music online for free. Right? You, well, I'm not saying um, for whoever sees this, I'm not telling you to do this. But, you know, you could download stuff from YouTube or Spotify or wherever, and, you know, or SoundCloud, Mixcloud or whatever, and, you know, get get started you know to practice or whatever in terms of singing like i mean it, it doesn't even matter what it is like we in a time of uncertainty just simply go for it play your best foot forward have a a good attitude towards it um it's always a plus if you got a passion for it because that means nothing is going to stop you um yeah, yeah and just just crank simple love it yeah love it. Positive vibes, no good, great advice, and that's what we always ask like our people on the show, like to give that last piece of advice because like there are people that are looking like they may be stuck and just don't know what to do with their lives, or like not even that they have dreams but they just don't know how to approach it. So like that positive advice, like definitely like helps encourage uh, people within the show for sure. So appreciate that, man. Um, so how can people find you? What what what? Give them the, your links, all that. Like what? How can they find you? Uh, so I'm currently in between lines of changing my handles because I would love to have all my handles as one thing. However, at Black Rose is taken on Twitter and is taken on Instagram. Oh, man. And I already use it for Facebook. Uh, so I don't know how would that going to work out. But for right now, um, main things, my Instagram is everyone knows Rose. That is pretty much the hub for, for everything I do. On my website, everyone knows rose.com, uh, Facebook, and SoundCloud. Those are everyone knows rose as well. Um, and podcasts, Black Rose Supremes podcast, which is just a, it's just a music podcast. So okay. I post a lot of mixes and stuff like that. There is. It's not a traditional podcast. However, I'm looking to get into a talk form podcast because a lot of people have been telling me I should do it based on some Instagram lives from last year, some discussions we had and stuff like that. Folks will tell me I should get into that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I believe if you type in Black Rose Supreme on whatever, you will find me. That's B-L-A-Q-R-O-S-E, one word, again. Anything you, you will find me, so Twitter, um, Instagram, um, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, um, even iHeartRadio. Yeah, I believe if you type in Black Rose, it, it's, it's going to come out. If you Google Black Rose, it's, it's going to come out. Okay. Um, but yeah, most important things, everyone knows Rose.com, everyone knows Rose on Instagram. Those are pretty much the hubs for everything. Um, yeah, that, that pretty much is it. Okay, well, I'll make sure to like on this video, put your name um, right under, you know, our, under your, your, your video and have, you know, our, our branding as well, too. So everybody can like, make sure to like follow you, click on you, you know, um, go on Instagram. And I don't know, I think you, you may sell like merch and stuff too. So like anything that's on there, yeah. like, so people can find you. So um, yeah, man, any, I don't know if there's anything else you want to say before we hop off. Um, well, Jada was supposed to come through a little earlier, but she was probably late, but big up Jada. Um, she's also, apart from, from you know, handling the management side and bookings and stuff like that, she also does the, the publicity side of, of things. Um, so, you know, pick her up for sure. Um, and, you know, follow, follow, on, follow on the socials because a lot of stuff is coming. Um, Lord knows we 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 too sure how things are gonna go with this whole corona thing, but I'm looking to be all over as soon as it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I can pretty much tell the people to look out for that. In the meantime, you can check out the mixes, check out the live audios, uh, check out the mix series, um, you know, check out all that stuff. In the meantime, until Black Rose can come to your city and turn up. So 
All right. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, I will, uh, you know, we really, you know, really appreciate you uh, coming on the show today, man. And um, I wish you all the success in everything that you do. Like, I know you're going to kill it. Like, keep keep grinding when COVID, like, gets cleared up. I know you're going to be traveling all over the world. So just keep the hustle, brother. And uh, I appreciate you. So um, thanks for tuning in. This is the Life Journey Podcast. Thanks for having me, y'all.